Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, looking forward to uh, spending the next hour or hour and a half with you all talking about searching in, uh, uh, in Greek. And um, I'm going to turn my camera off here so you can see my screen, uh, full, full screen. And um, that way I can, I can drink my drink and move around a little more freely, too, so you don't see what I'm doing. But uh, OK, so um, yeah, I did get this uh, last minute. I think Abram will, I mean, Abram will be fine. He just was feeling a little under the weather. Um, nowadays, when you say someone's not feeling well, you get all kinds of assumptions, but I, he, he'll be fine. So um, uh, but I love uh, uh, teaching about searching in accordance, because as I always say, that's like, um, you know, that's that's when you're really, um, you know, searching in the original languages in accordance is like taking your Ferrari that you've been driving the speed limit in America and then getting to take it out on the Audubon. All right. So this is really what Accordance was designed to do. And there's some amazing things you can do with it. Now, when Abram asked me to teach this intermediate Greek class, I was thinking, well, does intermediate Greek mean that they know some Greek and they're at an intermediate level with their Greek? Or does it mean that they're at an intermediate level with Accordance and they already are really familiar with how to use uh, you know, to search the, the Greek text in accordance. And uh, so, I, or, or does it mean that they're, you know, at a, at a beginning Greek level, but they're advanced in their use of accordance? So I don't know. I'm going to assume that you all know a little bit of Greek at least. Um, and I'm going to assume that you, you know, you know some of the basics of accordance, but, but even then, I'm not going to assume a whole lot about that because what happens with most of us is we use software. We, um, we, we tend to use it for a specific you know, task or, or a group of tasks. And beyond that, we don't, you know, no one has the time to learn how to, how to do everything that accordance can possibly do. We just do it to get the job done. And in, and in doing that, sometimes we miss out on some either uh, you know, easier ways of doing what we've always been doing or uh, cool things that you could have been doing that you haven't been because you didn't even know accordance could do it. So hopefully um, you'll you'll get some good tips and tricks as we go through this class and learn just the uh, you know some of the the basic fundamentals and we'll we'll, we'll do more than basic fundamentals because this is intermediate so we're we're going to go at least in, to an intermediate level today as well but I do want to start out um, just making sure we're all on the same page with our use of accordance and um, remember this this will be. Um, uh, recorded. You will get a link. I know I'm probably going to go over some things uh, faster than you wish I would, um, especially if some of you are following along and trying to do what I'm doing while I'm talking. Um, sometimes that may get frustrating, and I hope hope it won't. But um, uh, but just remember that uh, that if somehow you do skip a, skip a step or something, um, you'll have the recording and. Um, uh, Linda and Richard and Rick Mansfield are here to answer your questions while I'm talking. So if you do have a question about something I, I said or or assumed you knew that you didn't, um, type in your question in the question box and, and one of them will answer it. And at the end, um, uh, there'll be plenty of time for questions and answers too. So uh, you may want to, um, you know, if it's a question that you think um, Richard or Rick or Linda can answer, which they they know, uh, you know, Greek searching uh, uh, very well. Then then you know, ask away, or you can save your question till the end of class. Also, there's a PDF handout. I'll try to fo follow that. That's basically Abram's outline. I tweaked it a little bit, um, but I'll probably be talking about some things that aren't on that outline, and I might skip over some things. I, I'm going to try not to. But if I do, please excuse me, because you know how it is when you get someone else's notes. Um, you know they're going to teach the it in a in a their own unique personal way, and and I am too. So, uh, which is one of the cool things, because I'm sure uh, Abram will teach an intermediate Greek uh, seminar too, um, on down the road, and it'll I'm sure be significantly different than the kinds of thing I, things I'm showing, which is because accordance is so powerful that you know you can have multiple instructors and they won't even cover the same kind of material there won't be a huge amount of overlap so all right um the first thing i want to talk about is the actual greek text that i'll be working with it's the um the nestle allen uh, 28 now the thing is we actually have two versions of the nestle allen Allen text in accordance. And if I just search here in my library for NA28, 
um, you'll see that uh, there's one uh, that says uh, in it, uh, G and T 28T, that's also the Nestle Allen 28. And then you'll see one that's in a 28 dash T and it's got the word sigla in parentheses. Now you may not have both of these texts. You don't need both of them. Um, they do serve uh, unique purposes, each one of them. And I'm going to talk about what those purposes are. Um, but for what we're going to do today, um, uh, I'm going to be in the GNT 28T primarily. Um, the text itself, by the way, is, is exactly the same. It's the NA28 text. Um, the difference is um, that the, the NA28T that has Sigla in the library name there, let me just open that up for you. You'll notice that in the text itself, you have these little superscripted, we, you know, they're called Sigla. Um, sometimes they're superscripted letters and so forth, but usually in NA28, they're symbols. So, um, and when I click on them, they're symbols that uh, are attached to the apparatus and clicking on that Sigla opens up the apparatus, uh, the Nestle Allen 28 apparatus. Um, that if you bought a hard copy edition of the NA28, you know, the apparatus is there and the on the bottom of the pages and stuff. So um, here we've separated it out into a separate tool instead of all in one page because it makes it a lot cleaner and easier to read the text, all right? And if I open up the apparatus like that, as I'm scrolling along, the apparatus scrolls with me. And um, the cool thing is, is that uh, with the NA28T with a Sigla, um, I can hover over that, uh, those markers, the Sigla, it'll show me down here in the instant details palette, um, the information from the Sigla. So in some sense, I don't even need to open up the apparatus. I can just see it that way. And, and the main thing is though, that the Sigla indicate which word it's talking about, right? So if there's a, a, a word here and a symbol, you can see a Delphoi is mentioned in a particular um, uh, papyrus. So it's, uh, it's listed there. So um, now, so you may ask, why is that different than the GNT 28T that I'll be using? Well, the GNT 28T, uh, and this is it right here. Again, the text is identical, but it doesn't have the sigla, okay? Um, and uh, it still works with the apparatus. So I could actually open up the apparatus. I can link the two so that they scroll together. And by the way, if you notice how I just double clicked on the apparatus here in the library and it opened it up as a separate tab, um, it's not uh, linked yet. Um, and so they can scroll independently. If you want to link them, uh, the easiest way to do it is to right click on, on the tab here, the Nestle Allen 28 tab, uh, go down to tab ties and it's gonna ask what text or tool do you want to tie it to? Um, I'm just gonna tie it to the 28T here. And now, by the way, you'll see these little up and down arrows. That's an indicator that this tab is tied to something. And you'll see the uh, corresponding up and down arrows over here indicating the same thing. So as I scroll now, um, it'll scroll with me. So you can use the, um, the apparatus with the GNT28. Um, the problem is it doesn't have the Sigla. And, so you, and even so, the TNT 28T is our primary text. And the reason it's our primary text um, without the Sigla is that it works with the syntactical database. Now, um, and, and the, the uh, NA 28T with the Sigla does not work with the syntactical database. And that's because the Sigla interfere um, with the syntactical components in the database. Um, so you may want to have both texts, one to use more efficient, efficiently with the NA28 apparatus and uh, uh, one to work with the syntactical database, which we'll be talking about. Um, I won't be lingering a long time on the uh, uh, on syntax issues because uh, first of all, syntax, the syntactical database doesn't come in a lot of the different packages. It, um, I'm not, I don't know enough about the packages to know which ones it comes with and which ones it doesn't. Um, by the way, if you want to know if you have, um, if, the, if you have the syntactical database, uh, one of the easiest ways is to just um, scroll in your library um, past your texts, right past the text before you get to the tools section. Um, the syntax and diagram section is here and the syntactical databases will be listed here. The other way to do it, the other way to find out if you have it is if you have the NA28 open, the one without the Sigla, 
you can come over to add parallel and go down to syntax. Number one, there will be a syntax option there if you have the syntactical database. And then you can go to syntax of the Greek New Testament and open it up. And you'll see that as you, um, you know, that it corresponds with the words hovering over a subject here. We'll highlight the subject and we'll get into that in a minute. But I just wanted to talk about those two different um, texts that are identical text, but they have different functions. And I know that gets confusing. Um, and uh, uh, but uh, if you don't work with at the apparatus a lot, then the GNT 28T is all you need. In fact, um, I'm going to be talking about this in a minute. We have um, there are other um, apparatuses that you can use, um, and uh, and the Sigla won't come with them, but they have other kinds of markers. So anyway, we'll get to that. So regardless, for all the searching and stuff we'll we'll be doing, it doesn't matter which of these texts you have. I just want you to be clear on the differences be between those two. Now, um, I know I'm, I'm talking about some basic stuff, but again, I wanna make sure we're all on the same page and there's no confusion. All right, so when I'm in the text, as I am, um, and I'm looking at a word, um, I can triple click on a word and it's going to amplify to the, the, um, the default lexicon, okay? And in this case, when I triple clicked on RK, it, took, it opened up BDAG. All right. Now, why did it open up BDAG when I triple clicked on RK? If you've been using Accordance a long time, if you're if you're an old timer, um, then uh, then you might remember that the way we used to make our default lexicons, the default um, was that it would be the top level lexicon in your library. And that's how you knew it was the default. And it would just and you could just rearrange them any way you wanted. But the top one would be the one that opened up when you double clicked on them. But that's not the case anymore. It still is actually important how you organize these lexicons in your library, um, but, uh, but that's not how you make it the default. The way you make it the default is you go to your preferences. Now, if you're on a Mac, you're going to go to Accordance up on the menu bar and go down to Preferences. If you're on a PC, you're going to go to Edit and go down to Preferences. They're just same preferences located in a couple different ways because you know that's Windows and uh, you know Microsoft and Apple uh, just do it different differently, which you know, makes it fun when you're switching from one platform to the other. But when you open up your preferences, they'll, they'll be the same. And there's this amplify option right here, second one down on the left-hand side. And um, if you're in an English non-tagged text, something like you know the message, and you triple click on a word, I've got mine set to open up the Anchor Bible Dictionary. But here's where you would set your default lexicon, BDAG, all your lexicons will be listed here, and you select which one you want to be um, your default. Also, by the way, if you want to, if you're in the ESV, let's say, or the NRSV or the JPS, and you want to override their built-in um, Strong's type dictionaries, you can click on override those key number dictionaries, and then um, it'll go directly to BDAG. Um, in other words, uh, let me um, let me just click here if I think because this is kind of uh, important. I think. Um, so if I'm in the ESV right now and I triple click on Word, it's going to open up the Mount's Creek Dictionary because that's the, the dic dictionary or lexicon that's hard coded to the ESV. And if I went to the, um, uh, the King James and triple clicked on the same word, it's not going to open up Mount's, it's going to open up the Greek Strong's Dictionary because that's the one that's hard coded with the King James. All right. So it used to be you were just stuck with that, but no more. Um, now the cool thing is if you're in a, an English text that, that has those strong numbers or the Goodrich Kohlenberger numbering system or whatever numbering system they, they use, um, if you click on override key number dictionaries, then when you triple click an English text, it's going to go straight to that, um, that fancy lexicon that you paid a lot of money for, right? And, and why not? Because um, that'd be awesome. So, uh, so anyway, uh, just wanted to uh, point that out and I'll go back to the NA28 here. Um, all right, now, uh, that's a way to get to your default lexicon. Oh, and by the way, I said it was important, um, uh, the order that these were in, because um, what will happen is, if you go to your default lexicon, and uh, or you triple click on a word, let's say I go to, let's say I'm in the, another Greek text, let's say I'm in the Septuagint, um, and I triple click on a word um, that, uh, probably isn't in the Greek New Testament. Let's try it out, sure enough. Um, it's taking me to the LEH um, uh, lexicon. 
And so what happens in these texts is that it'll, it'll go to the next lexicon in the list until I can find one um, that has the word note that you're looking for. And here, um, now notice I have the older version of the LEH and the, and the third edition of the LEH. Now the one that it opened, let me open that again by triple clicking. The one that it opened, and the, by the way, I can find out exactly which of these it is by just right clicking inside this window and going to about this text and it'll open it up and it'll say, this is not the third edition. This is, this is that older one as you would expect because it's first in, in, in order here, okay? Um, so I may want to keep that in my library, um, but I will want to, it's a default to the uh, third edition. So I'm going to move that above the second edition. And now when I triple click on it, it's going to go to, and I can confirm that right click about this text and we'll see that. Yeah, now it's going to that third edition. So again, it starts at your default. And so it's probably best to have your default up the top. And then if it can't find the word, it'll go through them until you can't find anymore uh, until, you, until it finds what you're, hit, you're looking for. And I've seen um, some people where they had, you know, um, like a, a Spanish uh, version or a uh, Portuguese version or whatever, um, you know, as second and, and it kept, it would keep going to that Spanish or Portuguese version and they'd be wondering why and because it couldn't find it in mounts or whatever and it went to that. So anyway, just be aware of how accordance is working uh, in that kind of situation. All right, so let's go back to the Greek text again, or the New Testament. And um, uh, so we talked about the fact that you can amplify uh, to a particular word by just triple clicking on it. And it's uh, Genesis, it's gonna open it up in BDAG. But what happens, wouldn't it be cool if, uh, if when you um, clicked on that word, it would open up that word in every single one of your Greek lexicons. Um, and actually this is, and of course you can do that now. And it's a feature that we added when, um, when uh, Bible Works sort of closed their doors. Um, we really like this feature and a lot of Bible Works users like this feature. We implemented it in a different way than um, most Bible, you know, than Bible Works did. We didn't want to exactly copy them because we just have a different paradigm. Um, although uh, we're essentially, uh, we're very much the same, always have been in the sense that we're very text centric, right? Focused on the text with, um, uh, with commentaries and so forth as peripheral peripheral to the text. Um, and, uh, and, and so, you know, while they were still going, uh, it, it, you know, we didn't want to, um, you know, exactly duplicate what they were working on. So, so but we, we like this idea of being able to click on a word and seeing that word in all your um, lexicons at the same time. And what we came up with was this live click feature. All right, so you'll see live click right here. All right, and um, I got it checked which means it has this little cog wheel next to it. Now, if I uncheck live click, and by the way, live click only appears in text. It doesn't appear in tools, which leads me to have to tell you the difference between text and tools, all right? In accordance, those are specific, uh, those have specific meanings, okay? In accordance, um, you'll see right now, there's my tool category, um, but I can go to my text category. It, the, the easy way to remember it is that texts are all your Bibles and tools are everything else. But that's not actually accurate. Um, it's just an easier way for me to remember it. But um, text, it's, it's, either, it's better to say texts are your primary sources and tools are your secondary sources. So texts are the things you, you start out with and tools are the things like commentaries and journals and, and you know, lexicons and grammars that you use to understand the things that you start out with, okay? So text can be, um, uh, things other than the Bible. And so, for example, if you come down to this, and I just categorize things in my library in this kind of way. But, you know, if you come down to Greek non-biblical, we have things like Epictetus and Philo and so forth and all kinds of apocryphal texts and so forth. So, but these are all texts. Um, and so, uh, so anyway, I just wanted to talk about the, you know, make sure everybody was clear on the difference between texts and tools, because I'll probably be mentioning those kinds of categories as we go on. So texts are your primary sources and tools are your secondary sources. All right, so um, so live click only appears in text. So if I open up BDAG, there's no live click in BDAG, it's just in your text. And, and that little cog wheel that has the preferences doesn't show up until I click live click. So I click it, I get the little cog wheel, click on that little cog wheel. I have three different things that live click will do. And these 
don't, you know, just for now, ignore all this stuff over here. There are three things it'll do. It'll do a lexicon lookup when you click on a word. It'll look up a verse when you click on a verse reference. Um, in fact, it'll look at these verses in all your Bibles and the lexicon lookup will look up that word in all your lexicons. And word usage is to see how that word is used in, in, that, in all the, the texts that you have, either in the current book or in the entire text of all the texts that you have. Um, so I'm going to uncheck. You can have them all checked if you want. I'm just going to uncheck them except for lexicon lookup. Um, and I'm just going to use that default there. Um, by the way, let me just mention here in the options where it says interaction is instant and delayed, I would recommend checking delayed. And that's because um, when you click on a word and you have that uh, instant checked, um, it's hard to triple click because it's so quick, uh, it's it's so instantaneous that when you click that first click, even if you're triple clicking really fast, it'll often open up um, the lexicon lookup, even if that's not really what you wanted. But if you have delayed selected, it'll allow you time to triple click. It'll really come up quickly anyway. Um, don't think you'll be waiting for like 30 seconds. In fact, we'll see what the delayed is like right now. So I'm gonna choose delayed, click lexicon lookup, click okay. Um, now, when I click on uh, Ganesios, um, just and you saw how quick that was, right? I just clicked and boom, it, they're, they're all there. And so here's uh, Genesis in all my um, lexicons and I can just scroll through them or I can come here and select them. Um, now this is like a preview. So if I was at Thayer's here and I actually wanted to see the contents of, of this more deeply, I would click on open and now it's opening up Thayer's in a, in a different tab and, and there it is as a title. All right, so, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so anyway, now notice what's happening. Um, this live click feature is really handy. The problem is, um, uh, and, this, and this happens as you expand your accordance library, um, you get a lot of stuff that, um, that you probably aren't going to use, especially if you get a package, right? A lot of us tend to get like the biggest package we can afford. Um, you know, I always recommend getting the biggest package that has everything you need and then adding a la carte, the things, the good stuff, the things you really want. Um, but regardless, we always, I mean, you know, we always get stuff that we don't need. Um, for example, you know, for me, uh, if it's, uh, uh, if it's any of, if, you know, if it's, if it's Portuguese or Spanish or German, um, you know, I'm probably not going to read it. I know a little bit of French um, from high school and college, but that's a, that's about it. So, um, so those things aren't useful to me. So I would probably prefer just not even to see them in this list. And so you may want to create a custom group of, um, of lexicons that are just the ones that you would normally use. All right, so how do you do that? It's actually pretty easy. Um, I'm going to come to my library here and I'm just going to select the, the lexicons that I'm interested in. Just click on them. And now if you hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC, you can highlight items, um, non-contiguous items. Um, you can, uh, yeah, so just select all the ones that you think you might be interested in. I'm just, I'm not gonna select everything I'm interested in, but just a few, but you get the idea. Now, right click on any of the highlighted items, doesn't matter which one, right click, and then go to add, add to user group and new group. Add to user group, new group. I'm going to call it um, Greek lexicons. And by the way, this just got added to the, down at the bottom of your library to the my group section. It didn't move these titles. These are now like hyperlinks to, you know, BDAG is still under Greek lexicons if I go to my tools, all right? But now, when I go to these live click preferences again, um, where there's this use custom group option, I check it, and now um, Greek lexicons is down here at the bottom. And now when I click on Gennesios, it's going to open up just uh, those um, the lexicons that, that I was interested in. And by the way, let me scroll this out a little bit so you can see what's going on here, because you'll see that they're duplicated. Um, uh, for example, uh, yeah, so some will say Greek entry. And so that's saying that it found Genesis in the, in the actual entry for a word, but then it'll also come down and say Greek content, all right? And that means that that's not a title. It's not the main entry for Genesis. It's Genesis is just mentioned somewhere in the text itself, but it puts that, 
at a lower level in the list because probably what you're looking for is the main entry, um, not not just uh, uh, a, a mention of it somewhere down down the list. But anyway, you get the idea. Now I have a list of everything that I want. And by the way, if I want to add another uh, lexicon to that list sometime, I, I just go back up to my library, right click on the item, add to user group, and then select reselect that Greek lexicon group, and just like that, it's added to that group. Okay. All right. Um, so one of the differences, by the way, between teaching a seminar like this and teaching webinars that I do once a week is that um, we do field questions. Like I, I'll field questions during the, the seminar uh, webinar, and it gives me a time a chance when I ask. Say, now does anybody have any questions um, to to get a drink? So I'm gonna get a drink now. So hold on just a second. Uh, thank you. There you go. Um, and now I'm gonna keep going. Okay. So that's live click. And um, again, it's got some other cool features. I'm not, I, I just wanted to talk about the lexicon lookup because I think that's something that you all will be using a lot. Verse lookup, same kind of thing. You get the idea. And I think I might be talking about it a little bit later, but I can't remember because I kind of put this together pretty quickly. But if I you know, click on a verse reference over here, it's going to look up those verses and, and all my texts. Um, so that's, or you can create a custom group of texts in the same way that we created a custom group for our lexicons too. So now I'm not going to talk about, um, oh, let me just mention this. Um, in the PDF uh, handout, which you can access by going to the GoToWebinar control panel and go down to the very bottom, and there's a category, you'll see there's different categories like audio, webcam, questions, stuff like that. There's one that's called handouts, and that PDF is there. Um, and in that PDF, um, Abram, uh, kindly put links to all the Greek lexicons available in Accordance. And you can just click on that link in the PDF and it'll open up the Accordance webpage for you and, um, and show you all the different uh, lexicons that, uh, that we have. Um, now, um, I'm not going to get into a lot of the differences between the different lexicons, um, uh, mostly because that's not you know that's not my forte abram would have been a lot better at doing that and that's why i'm hoping he'll, he's going to do another webcast because he would come at it from a from a different angle angle um uh but uh, but you'll see them there and if you do have questions about you know why someone would prefer one particular lexicon over uh over another um if i always like to talk about going to our forums if you go to help up on your menu bar and go down to discussion forums accordance has some of the best user users in the world and our forums because of that are some of the best forums out there um, we get lively discussion great interaction um, the people are, are wonderful patient and kind and if you ask questions like um you know why would i prefer you know low and nida over um you know uh midnight or something like that um people will people that use these on a daily basis will chime in and, and give their input so but discussion forums are great for other things too. If you have a module request, something in accordance that you wish we had that we don't, um, feature request, if there's something that you wish, you know, uh, a feature that you that that you wish we had that we don't, that kind of thing. Um, general topics, Windows specific topics, Mac specific topics, iOS specific topics. You get the idea. Uh, they're all on those forums. So um, and uh, so I, I I recommend checking those out. All right, um, I do wanna talk about grammars. If you're looking at the PDF, that's the next section. Um, and and uh, amplifying to a grammar is, is, what, uh, uh, is what's next on the list. Now, when I talk about amplifying in accordance, we use that word a lot. In fact, you'll see this amplify button right here on the toolbar, right? Um, in fact, if I hover over anything in the library, I'll still, I'll have that amplify button over here. And if I go to amplify up on the menu bar, I've got a, a virtual, um, you know, copy of my library and everything in it over here too. So uh, amplifying must be pretty important in accordance, you know, to have it in all those different places. So what is amplifying? What do we mean by amplifying? Well, what we mean by amplifying, whoops, by the way, I first, I've been using accordance so long, for sometimes I just, and I've got, I use a trackpad, and I just randomly accidentally tap my finger on stuff. So a lot of times I turn off live click because I I'll, I'll, things will be popping up all over the place because I'm just accidentally tapping um, for some, I don't even know why I do it, but I do. So so how do you amplify? What does amplify mean? Um, to 
amplifying just basically means performing a search in another in another tool or a text. All right. So um, if I have if I select a word here, um, and by the way, there's two different ways to select that. Notice that uh, I don't know if you can see this, but my cursor is flashing in Geneseos. Um, but I can also hover over. I can also double click on it, and now it's highlighted that way too. All right. In your preferences, you can set whether you want amplifying to work by merely putting the flashing cursor in it or having to double click to select it. Um, and the way you do that, again, go to your preferences, accordance up on the Mac, uh, edit on a PC, and um, I believe it's under the amplify settings. Yeah, second one down, amplify, which you would expect because it has to do with amplifying. If you click on this one, well, actually I would uncheck it. I don't even know if it's checked by default or not, but if it says require selection for amplifying, I tend to leave it unchecked. That way I don't have to like purposely make sure it's highlighted. I can just put make sure my cursor's in the word. All right, so if you uncheck require selection for amplifying there, then yeah, then it doesn't have to actually be lit up and highlighted. You can just have your blinking cursor in the word and it'll work. All right, and then I can go to amplify here or up here or over on my, um, in my library. I tend to, I, I tend to either, usually use the toolbar probably. Um, and you can go down to, um, uh, and again, we were talking about grammars. I've got mine sort of categorized here um, by uh, Greek and Hebrew. And so you can just select the grammar and it'll take you to that particular word um, in the uh, particular grammar that you amplified to. All right, uh, kind of cool. Now, let me, let me talk about what just happened here when we um, amplified to Genesis. All right. Uh, what happened is I found two exact hits. All right. Um, and uh, uh, let's see. I can click, I can navigate from hit to hit right here by clicking on that down arrow and it'll, um, it'll take me to either of those hits. All right. And um, uh, now I can also, there's a, there's a cool, a really cool feature in Accordance that I use all the time, but it's sort of hidden away. Richard actually talked about it in his wonderful um, uh, seminar earlier today on workspaces. And if you didn't get a chance to see that, you should um, uh, the, you should uh, check the websites because we'll have you know the video posted on on the websites and stuff. And it, it was great. And he mentioned this. I use this all the time. So here's the deal. Um, it found two instances of. Um, uh, Genesis, but I don't know where they are or under what article they're talking about. I mean, I can click on hit to hit and then scroll around to see what article it's under, or I can go to this little cog wheel here. Now it's on my, my, the right side for me because I'm on a Mac. I'm pretty sure it's on the left side over here if you're on a PC. I'm sure I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, but I think that's true. Anyway, if I click on this cog wheel and go to show text as, you have this option in every tool. Anytime you perform a search in a tool, it can be a journal, Anchor Bible Dictionary, Erdman's Dictionary, a grammar as we're in now. It'll, any tool this will do this. If I go to show text as, and then I go to paragraphs, it'll only display those paragraphs um, that have those hits. But that doesn't help me know, um, you know exactly you know, what the article is about. And so if I click back on that, go to show text as and go to add titles, now it also gives me the main heading under which that, um, that pair, the, the hit inside that paragraph is found. So I'm only seeing the main heading and the paragraphs that contain those hits and it eliminated every single, everything else um, from BDF Greek grammar. So um, I love using that. It's just so, it's so much easier than using the hit button. By the way, when you go to what we just did, show text add paragraphs, or just go directly to add titles, you don't have to click paragraphs first and then go to add titles. You can just go directly to add titles and it's the same thing. Um, so if I go there, I don't need the hit mark, the hit arrows anymore because I, all I'm seeing is hits, right? I'm not, I'm not seeing anything else but hits. So anyway, I love this feature. Um, take me right to, to where I wanna go. Um, in any kind of tool that I that I happen to be in. All right, I want to talk about some of the language tools that we have in Accordance. Um, there's some really cool uh, uh, ways of 
uh, working with um, the Greek text. And and if you um, if you if you're you know if you're a student or a professor and you've been using Accordance a little bit for original language studies, you've probably already discovered these tools. But I I hesitate to not mention them um, because I I think they're important. So. Um, I'm, I do, I'm not going to linger on them because uh, we do have, by the way, if you go to help and go down to, to podcasts, we have podcasts that talk about how to use the language tools. Uh, we have webinars that talk about how to use the language tools. Uh, the Accordance Help documentation, which is probably like the equivalent of, a, I don't know, a 500 page uh, 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 help document that's it's, uh, in an HTML format, but it's local on your drive. So um, it's uh, you don't have to be you know connected to the internet to access it, and it's got um, uh, really good help, uh, helpful and information about using the language tools as well as you would expect, since it's called help, right? It's the same thing. By the way, we used to print this out uh, when I first started working for with Accordance, probably 20 years ago. Um, we printed out copies, and that was because back in the day, that's what everybody expected, right? You got a big box of software that weighed like 30 pounds, and there was I don't know a few floppy disks and like you know 28 pounds of um, of, of you know of help guides and and I kind of like I kind of miss those days because those were kind of cool. The problem is um, software didn't get updated as often back when you had to recreate floppy disks and recreate DVDs and CDs. You know now. We, you know, our software gets updated and, and our content gets updated all the time. And we, if we had this printed out, we'd be printing out new copies all the time. And the old stuff would end up in a landfill. So it's just, it doesn't make any sense. But, um, but that, that, you know, it was like 400 pages, like 15 years ago. So it's way bigger than that now. And it's, uh, but it's, it's so uh, don't, don't ignore it. It's a cool, cool resource. And by the way, if, um, if you click on help here on your toolbar, it'll take you to a context of where help. All right. So I my cursor was in the search tab here. Um, so when I clicked on help here, the help button on my toolbar, it took me to the search tab. Um, now, if I go to help up here and go down to accordance help, it just takes you to the main page with um, the contents and an index and so forth. Um, but uh, but always if you click on it from the toolbar, it's going to give you context uh, aware help, and that's kind of cool. All right, language tools. All right, how do you access them? A um, uh, couple different ways. You can add um, the buttons to your toolbar, and the way you do that um, is right click on and on the toolbar, go down to customize toolbar. This is completely different uh, between a Mac and a PC and how you do this. So I'm not going to talk about how to do this. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's too different I, it's, and it's not really what we're talking about here, but just some of the language tools are available as buttons here. So things like parsing and word chart and so forth. Um, and you can just add those, uh, uh to the, to the toolbar as you, as you like. Um, but I can go, if I have it, uh, you know, I've got a phrase selected there, I can go to amplify. And if I go down here, um, to language. There's a language section here under Amplify, and I can go to parsing, and it's going to parse um, uh, that phrase for us. Um, that's kind of cool. It's probably not, um, you know, professors are probably wishing these tools weren't available for their students. Um, <clears throat> diagram, that's kind of cool too. And uh, you can move things around here and create your own diagrams. I use that actually for more for phrasing i think uh, a lot of people call it uh, um, at least i know bill mounts called it that i don't know if he's the one that originally came up with it but phrasing is basically just breaking it down into especially if you get into like you know a big pauline um, sentence uh and you're trying to make heads and tails of it you're not really diagramming it you're just moving things around so it makes a little bit more sense it lines up you know the thoughts line up so i kind of use it for that more than anything else um but uh um, and then you can actually, if you're on a Mac, you can speak it, but the word chart too, this is, um, this is user editable. So same kind of thing that gives that the parsing option gives you, but that's not editable. And this is uh, so kind of cool. So anyway, I did want to make sure everybody knew that those language tools were available. And again, go to amplify, you know, highlight, highlight, a uh, uh, something from the text, go to amplify, go down to language and, um, and they're all 
they're all listed there. And notice that it'll even, even color code it for you, um, which is kind of neat too. And with a legend to show you what they are. All right, um, very good. Um, I did, again, not gonna linger on that a lot, but we have some other um, tools that uh, are, are handy for looking at the text. Um, those tools I just showed you are built into Accordance. And uh, if you have, um, you know, the lowest version of Accordance, you know, uh, lowest package or whatever, um, they're, they're available, it's not like they're add-ons. Um, but we have a couple things that are add-ons um, that I just wanted to mention. Uh, one is um, the actual uh, pre-built diagrams. So, so what I showed you earlier, and here I'm just gonna, let me just go to John. So it's more, it's something we're all probably more familiar with. Um, so yeah, notice again, if I go down to language and go to diagram here, um, I have to build, I have to build my own diagram, okay? There's no, um, <clears throat> it's not, it's not pre-built, although I have to do all the work. But if I come over to add parallel, and if I have the diagram, if I purchase the diagram tool, which is an add-on, might come with some packages, I don't know. Um, and then I go to diagram of Greek New Testament, you'll have pre-built diagrams for you. And these are, these are really handy. Um, again, they're, I like them because it gives the thought, uh, it just breaks down the thought ideas in, into something that's really, really easy to see. Um, so. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, again, we've got those for the Greek New Testament um, and uh, uh, color coded, hover over them. It's going to, you know, break down the words too. It's going to, uh, um, you know, uh, now, it, but it, what it doesn't do, it do doesn't highlight the corresponding word, but we have something that does. If you go to add parallel again, and instead of going to diagram, you go to syntax and go to syntax of the Greek New Testament. Um, uh, this is uh, this syntactical database. Um, we'll break it down um, syntactically. Obviously, hovering over a word is going to highlight the corresponding word, um, but uh, highlighting the um, uh, the part of speech here. It's you know when I go to subject here, and, and by the way, uh, in the infinite details palette, it'll tell you that S stands for subject. Some of these are kind of cryptic, and you may not know that F is a specifier or the definite article and that C is a complement and so forth. Um, so uh, now I'm showing you it this way, but personally, this isn't really how I use the syntactical database. Um, and I, I don't work with syntax that much, but I will show you how I do use it in, in, in just a minute. Um, and uh, I want to make you aware that those kinds of tools were available too. Now, I do briefly want to talk about the different, um, uh, a couple of the apparatuses that we have available, and that's because um, we, uh, uh, you know, this is geared toward an intermediate level uh, Greek user where, you know, using an apparatus might be familiar to you. All right. Um, and so I'm going to go from the Greek New Testament here that doesn't have the sigla, and I'm going to go to the NA28 that does, all right, and again, you'll notice it because they'll say sigla in parentheses there in the library, and because it'll have the sigla. And clicking on them will display the apparatus, and we've talked about this before, and the NA28 apparatus is, is, is great, and it, and it comes with the NA, you know, it, it, it's not a, a hugely expensive, uh, you know, upgrade if you already have the NA28, I don't, think it's very much at all um and the apparatus is uh, what i like about it is it's um it's uh it's sort of like how would you say um it's sort of like um i, I well, okay i tell people you know when you're looking at um the info pane i'm not going to talk a long time about the info pane but the info pane is cool because when you open it it takes you it shows you everything in your library associated with the particular passage you have to be at it's kind of like um, going to a, a seminary uh, library and go, walking up to the front desk and saying, you know, would you mind going to the stacks and bringing me back every single thing related to Jude 5? And they would look at you like you were crazy and say no, <laughs> right? Um, but that's what we're doing here with the info pane. It's bringing up everything in your library related to, uh, uh, to Jude 5. So, um, uh, but, okay, I was saying that to say, um, that uh, 
uh, sometimes when I'm talking about commentaries um, and I'm talking about study Bibles, um, sometimes people disparage the idea of study Bibles, but I kind of like study Bibles, even in, you know, even in accordance, because, um, you know, the cool thing about accordance is that, you know, people take use study Bibles because they can take one big, thick study Bible with them to church or whatever, and they've got like a commentary and everything in one. You can't take a massive, you know, 15 volume set of commentaries with you to church, or at least if you did, you'd be looked at, you know, with a lot of side eye. Um, but what I like about study Bibles, even in accordance, is that they're sort, sort of like a Reader's Digest condensed version of what you might get in some commentaries, all right? Um, sometimes, you know, reading a commentary is like drinking from a fire hose. Um, you know, there are times where you want everything, right? But there are a lot of times where you just want the, the main ideas, the good stuff. Um, and at their best, study Bibles can be, can be that. They, it can be like panning for gold where you don't, you know, they've gotten rid of the sand and left you just the nuggets, right? Well, um, I say all that to say, I look at the NA28 apparatus as kind of like a study Bible version of an apparatus. Um, it gives you the good information, the major details that you need to know. Um, but if you want to go any deeper than that, um, we've got one called the CNTTS Apparatus, um, uh, Center for New Testament Textual Studies. And, uh, and what I, uh, let me see if I can make this a little bit. Um, notice it's not tied. So if I want to tie it, remember how I do that? I right click on the tab, go to tab ties, and I'm going to tie it to my Greek text. And now when I move around, now I'm going to Jude 5 here. So let me bring this tab side by side. And by the way, just dragging it. I haven't let go of my mouse button yet, but I can see where it's going to go just by that gray area. When I let go, it's going to go there. So here's the NA28 apparatus for Jude 5. Here's the CNTTS apparatus for Jude 5. And I can scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. It's going to show me virtually every possible um, um, scrap of, of text that might have uh, anything related to, um, to Jude 5 uh, in it. So, um, so I like that. And by the way, I, I brought up Jude 5 because that's one of the, um, the major changes in the NA28 is that um, is, is Jude 5 here where, <clears throat> um, and let me just add a parallel text in English so we can all look at it here. Um, I moved, I moved my text all around and now I'm trying to figure out where I, uh, where I got that. So, oh, what now I want to remind you, although you want to fully do it, that Jesus who saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed those who did not believe. Um, actually, let me just click on Jude. Well, let me turn on, oh, I do have life with already turned on. Good. Let me just click on Jude 5 and it'll open them up in my texts and we'll see. Now I want to remind you, ESV has Jesus, CSV has Jesus because it's following the NA28 King James, um, the Lord uh, uh, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt and um, even the Holman um, has Lord, even though their update, the CSB uh, has shifted to Jesus and ASB. So any of the older translations are probably going to have, um, have Lord, newer translations are going to have Jesus and that's because they're following the NA28 because it's, um, you know, it's uh, certainly the harder reading, right? Um, uh, you'd imagine a scribe would have seen Jesus there wiping out a bunch of people and thought, mm, maybe, maybe that should be changed to Lord or God or something like that. Um, and you wouldn't see him changing it from Lord to, to Jesus. Um, so it's, it would certainly be the harder reading, but you get the idea. So you can, you can find um, the, particular, uh, uh, the particular part of, of Jude 5 um, that, that, it's, that it's mentioning here. And um, let's see if we will find it uh, when past it. So anyway, um, so yeah, you get the idea here. Okay. Um, and by the way, hovering over any one of, uh, of these um, uh, markers will tell you what, you know, particularly which codex or which uh, papyrus it is. Um, but you get the idea. I just want to point out that we have this um, and it's, um, uh, it's, a, it's a powerful tool. So um, good. I'm going to. Um, uh, I'm going to. I don't like to spend too long talking about stuff that people um, may not own, but um, 
because you'll just be sitting there wishing you had it, right? <laughs> so I want to talk about stuff you can do in accordance. So I'm going to go from there to talking about searching in accordance, because that's what we're all here for, right? Um, this is going to be fun, because again, this is when you are taking your Ferrari out on the, on the Audubon. All right, so how do you search in accordance? I'm going to start off kind of simple, okay? So if, uh, let's say I have a word I want to search for, um, like haste, epsilon, iota, sigma, hit enter. All right, now I want to see um, the results of my search in an analysis window. Um, because notice how many hits I have. I have 2,112 hits, okay? In 1,747 uh, verses, obviously many verses have um, ace or haste more than once. So I want to go to an analysis window to see what I have. So if I click on the analysis button, now I'm in version 13. If you're in an older version of 13, uh, I'm sorry, of accordance, your analysis um, options are gonna be here in the middle. All right, in version 13, we shifted them over to the side here. And we have different types of analytics that you can perform in accordance. And what I always tell people is, out of all the ones we have, and we have some cool ones, uh, and I'm gonna show you some, uh, but 90% of the time, the one I use is analysis. If you never use any other analytic except analysis, you, you'll be awesome, all right? I'm just saying. That's the one most people are going to use, I'm pretty sure. So if you go to analysis, especially if you're working with original languages, um, and other, you know, if you're, if you're in English or something, you might use the concordance or something. But if you're working with original languages, you're going to be using the analysis uh, window a lot. So here it is. It, I don't have to scroll up and down through 1,747 verses to see that what I got was ace and haste. And let me um, bump those up a little bit bigger so you can see that. So, but here's the thing, OK? I typed in a word. And accordance ignored um, ignored the breathing marks, right? So um, here's haste with a rough, rough breathing mark, and here's ace with uh, without a rough breathing mark, and they they're two completely different words, okay? Um, and that's because by default, accordance um, does not pay attention um, to vowel pointing or to um, uh, or to those kinds of breathing marks, and that's kind of good, right? It's the same kind of idea that if, uh, let me open up, um, uh, let me just open up an ESV here. Same kind of idea that if, if I was in um, a, an English text and I type in, um, you know, love, or actually let's do Lord, I'll do Lord, okay? Uh, and let's do an analysis uh, of this search, okay? What I have here, is Lord with lowercase l 198 times and Lord with a capital L 7,691 times. Well, I don't, you know, Lord, but sometimes you do care, right? Because, it, you know, in the case of ace and haste and in the case of Lord where a lowercase l is, is going to be, you know, is never going to, you know, stand for, um, for, for God, right? Um, so sometimes you do care, but a lot of times you don't, because if you were typing in love, you wouldn't want to have to say, okay, look for lowercase l love, look for uppercase l love, you know, you just want to look for love. Um, so how do you tell accordance that you do care um, about things like, uh, uh, like you know, accents or, um, uh, or, or, you know, vowel pointing in Hebrew or even in English, uh, something that you want to be case sensitive? Well, you can put the equal sign in front of it. All right, and so if I type in equals with capital L Lord and hit enter, look, it updated the analysis window. It got rid of all the lowercase L Lords and it's just showing me the uppercase L Lord. All right, um, so you can tell accordance that you do want an exact match for a certain kind of word. And the way you do that is you put the equal sign in front of it. All right, <clears throat> now I can do it this way too. So if I have, um, haste being displayed here, and I put an equal sign in front of it and hit enter, then it's going to say, okay, yeah, I get it. You want to, um, you do care about that heavy breathing mark. You are looking for, for haste and not ace, all right? So again, that's kind of important. This, you know, it, it doesn't come into play all the time, but it does come into play sometimes, and uh, this is a, a good example of that. All right, now let's go to, let's perform another search. Let's go to, 
Um, uh, oops. I see. I did it again. I just randomly clicked. I actually, I, well, I meant to hit the tab key and I, uh, I missed. But oh, and this is a little. This has nothing to do with Greek. It's just an accordance tip that you may not know. That's good to know. If you tap the tab key, it cycles you between the search entry box up here and the go-to box down here. The go-to box is actually where you navigate from verse to verse. This is where you search. But hitting tab, just every time I hit tab, it just cycles me back and forth. Good, uh, good um, uh, shortcut to know. And by another one, another one since I've got to do it too, um, to cycle between verses and words, um, it's command semicolon on a Mac or control semicolon on a PC. You would hold down either the command or the control key. And while you're holding down that key, just hit, just tap the semicolon key and it lets you cycle uh, between those two. And I love that because I, I like keeping my hands on the keyboard and not having to move to my mouse all the time. So um, I use those, those two all the time. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to navigate to John. So just again, another place where we're kind of uh, familiar with. Okay. So, um, so let's say, uh, you know what, I think actually what I'm going to do here, I don't even know if we need to, um, oh, you know what, actually, let's go back to that, that search for ACE. And I'm sorry, this is one of those places where, um, I didn't have enough time to sort of collect my thoughts and, and, and make this flow the way I wanted it to flow. Um, but I wanted to show you something with that ACE um, and HACE search. Let's just go back and do that. And just uh, Epsilon, Iota, Sigma. Um, and by the way, I guess I'm assuming that you guys know uh, how to type in the different letters. Um, and I probably shouldn't assume that. Um, uh, let me just mention that most of the letters on, on your keyboard are going to map to what you think they would, right? You know, E is going to be epsilon, Yoda is going to be I, sigma is going to be S. I mean, you just most of them, them are kind of obvious, but some of them aren't. I don't think like theta is Q. Um, that might not be obvious. So if you go to window up on your menu bar and go down to characters, you'll have this character palette. Um, you can also click this little icon here and it'll, it'll um, allow you to move it around wherever you want. But hovering over each one of these, you can click on them and it'll enter it for you or down at the bottom of that little pane, it'll show you that, you know, that alpha is an A and B is B, gamma is a G. And you can even type in the different, um, you know, breathing marks and accents and so forth if you want to. So I want to point that, that's a good way to, to know um, about those characters. Um, and uh, by the way, also, if you go to our help documentation, go to help and go down to accordance help. And I'm going to expand this out with this little symbol here to fill my whole screen. And if you go to Greek keyboard, when you do a search, um, entering Greek characters, um, there it is. And you can print that out. And that's um, <clears throat> another good way, excuse me. <clears throat> Let me take a drink here. Another good way to start learning which, uh, which keys map to, um, which letters map to which keys on the keyboard. Um, <clears throat> And you probably uh, missed that. Uh, I went through that really quickly, but um, uh, I'll do it one more time, even though it's recorded. If you go to help, go down to accordance help. In the search box here, just type in Greek keyboard. All right, second one down, entering Greek characters. Click on that, and then just scroll down until you'll see it eventually. There it is, yeah. And, you could just right click on it, copy image, and then paste it into paint or, you know, uh, whatever paint program you have, on, you know, um, paste it into anything <laughs> once you copy it. Uh, and it, it should print out just fine for you. All right. Okay. But what I said was, yeah, um, I'm just going to go back to that search for uh, ace and haste because I want to do, um, and then I'm going to go back to the analysis too. Um, uh, because at this point, I, I want to show you. Um, uh, I want to talk about a keyboard shortcut that's probably the main keyboard shortcut that you need to know when you're using um, accordance. Um, if you don't learn any other keyboard shortcut, learn this because this will be your friend when you're when you're especially if you're working in original languages. And that's Command T for for text on a Mac or Control T for text on a PC. Command T or Control T. So if I I'm in my analysis window right here, okay? And it's, and it's notice it's the active window. See how I'm using a green color, so it's green. If I click over here, now that's green, that's the active window. 
Um, but if I click on this little um, cog wheel and I go down to customize display, command T or control T, um, that's where it's located, but, it, but just learn the keyboard shortcut. Um, event, originally it was command T because it would stand for customize the text display or customize tool display, but now it customizes any display. Um, and so if I'm in my text and do command or control T, it gives me all my text display preferences for the particular text I'm in. But if I'm in the analysis window, now I get a, cool, a bunch of cool options for the analysis that I just performed. All right, so what am I seeing right now in the analysis window? Let me go back here. Think about what I'm seeing here. Ignore this stuff at the top. Right here, what am I seeing? I'm seeing two different lexical forms of two different words. So I'm seeing two different words, right? Two different lexical forms. Um, and let me just mention at the risk of sounding pedantic, which means I'm going to be pedantic because you never say at the risk of sounding pedantic without being pedantic. But at the risk of sounding pedantic, um, lexical forms are the forms that you would find in the lexicon, right? Because we're going to be talking about inflected forms in just a second. And inflected forms, it'd be like if you, an inflected form would be like the word running in English, right? If you had the word running and you went to an English dictionary, you wouldn't look up running, right? It you would look up um, to run, the infinitive. You'd look up run. And then you would see the different forms. You'd see ran, the past tense, and running, and, and so forth. Those would be inflected forms. The lexical form would be the word run, okay? So what you're seeing here, these are the lexical forms. All right, now let me go back to Command T or Control T, and you'll notice in this column right here, these are all my options in this list, all right? These are all my options. Oh, and um, this looks different if you have older versions of Accordance. Um, in older versions of Accordance, it was, we had multiple columns because each column can represent a word um, and you can add columns if you want to but now we we, we simplified it so if yours looks different it's because um, it's because of you're using an older version of accordance and it works the same way though these are all your options and right now i'm just seeing the lexical form of the word and uh, nothing else but if i want to also see the inflected forms of these words I can grab this inflect option here and drag it underneath the lexical form and click OK. There you go. And now I'm seeing every one of the inflected forms of these words that are found in the Greek New Testament. All right. Um, and obviously, if I was in the Septuagint, I'd be finding other forms because it would have more different forms. All right. Now, let's say I want to find a specific form. Like down here, this is kind of an interesting one. Let me bump this up so you can see a little bit better. Um, here's um, here's Ace with a with a um, an acute accent mark, and so that's kind of unusual. I'd be curious to know where that one was found, right? Um, so if I just uh, triple click on it, it's going to open it up in a new tab and take me to the location for that. So that ha that works with any of them. So if I go to Enos here, triple click on it, opens up new tab or recycles that tab and shows me that. But let's go back to, to this with that accent mark here. Um, uh, and by the way, what it's saying is here, uh, it's, it's a lot of accordance uh, information, but it put that in there for you automatically. And it's saying, find this specific, um, this specific, you know, go to, go to the word ace, but find this specific inflected form whenever you find it. And by the way, the at sign, um, the at sign is uh, used in accordance a lot. It, usually it puts it in for you, but I like to talk about what it does um, because it's kind of important. All it does is it connects two different ideas together in a one word search. So let me space it out here. All right. The at sign connects two different ideas together in a one word search. So I only found one. I mean, I was only looking for one word, but there are two ideas about this word that are important to me. One is that it's you know the, the the lexical form is ace but the other idea is that the inf specific inflected form with these specific um accent marks um that's exactly what i'm looking for that variation of of ace it would be sort of like i describe it like this so if i go to my uh to, to my bedroom and i and i open up let's say i'm looking for a, a sock i open so i open up my, my my drawers i look i grab a sock and i so i've got a sock well, now I realize what I have in my hand is a brown sock, and I really need a blue sock, okay? And so, so now I, what I, I'm looking for, still I'm looking for one thing, right? I'm not looking for a sock and something that's blue, 
like a blue pair of underwear, right? I'm looking for one thing, but there are two ideas about this one thing that are really important. One is that it's a sock and the other one that it's, a, that it's blue, okay? And that's what the at sign does. If I wanted to, to type my blue sock in, I would type in blue at sock, okay? And that's all the at sign does, connects two or more. Um, I, you could have an at something else and add it to it. Um, I could have blue at sock at, you know, uh, fuzzy, <laughs> right? Um, and uh, you can add multiple ideas together. And again, accordance usually puts that in for you, but I like you to know what's going on so it's not quite so cryptic um, when, when you see it, because um, there's, a, there's a good explanation for why it's doing what it's doing. Um, now, let's say I wanted to find, you know, I want to find if there are any of my um, uh, grammars that are talking about, uh, about this, particular, um, this particular form of the word. So I'm going to just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight this, you know, the, the two words together. And, um, and you know what, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna go to research. And I can do that by going to, research is, is what you do when you want to look for, um, uh, instead of just looking through one thing, you want to look through a whole collection of things, all right? So I can right click on it and say research. And notice that anything in square brackets are predefined groups. And I've got a predefined group here for grammars. So if I click on my grammars, just like that, it's going to go to all my grammars and find that. Now, notice what it did. And this is another, this is a little, uh, a little trick, a little tip I think you guys will like. Uh, whoops, didn't even just click on that. I'll check live quick. Uh, all right, notice what it did. It, um, it, it found, the, it inserted the lexical form even though I was looking at an inflected form because by default, that's what accordance wants to do. It wants you to enter the lexical form, the form you find in the lexicon, and it'll show you all the different um, inflected forms that are available. But how about when you want to say, you know what, I want this exact inflected form. You know, I'm really picky. I, I don't want you to find all the different forms. I want this form. This is the whole point in this, you know, of looking at this interesting accented version of ACE is I want to find this. Um, well, all you have to do is hold down the option key or the alt on a Mac, option on a Mac, alt on a PC, and do the same thing. While you're holding, holding down the option or the alt key, um, go to research, go down to grammars, um, and it's going to <clears throat> put the quote, quotes around it, telling you that, that the quotes mean that this is an inflected form, and it's going to find that exact form for you. All right, and uh, I notice it, it does. Um, that uh, as we go through here, we'll see it found that specific form um, throughout, all right, um, good. Now, let's um, play around a little bit more with, um, with searching. Let me just go back here. So we haven't even gotten into a whole, these are just like some of the basics. And I'm, I realize I have like 20 more minutes and, uh, and I've got a lot of stuff I want to show you. So let's talk about, and so I'm gonna skip some, some of the stuff I have on, on my list here. Um, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's look for agapao, something simple. Um, uh, the word search, A-G-A-P. A W agapao is how you type it on your keyboard. All right, all right, just like that. And see what happened. Agapao is the lexical form. It's showing you all the different inflected forms. And if I wanted to see all the inflected forms, what would I do? I would go to my analysis, right? Again. And wait, it's not showing me all the inflected forms. How do I get the analysis to show me all the inflected forms? Ah, Command T on a Mac, Control T on a PC and drag that inflected option over here and click OK, and there you go. Um, and, uh, but notice that, at least on mine, it's sorting it alphabetically. Um, and that's, this, excuse me, this is the primary sort, and I only have one, word, one lexical word, it's agapao. So um, if you come back to that cog wheel here and go back to Command T or Control T, or just type in the keyboard, uh, you'll, uh, key, keys, the key combination, you can come over here to secondary sort and let's use, let's sort by frequency and, uh, and do countdown instead. And there you go. Now it's showing me all the different um, inflected forms of, of agapao um, that, uh, that we found. And um, let's do this. Let's see which books of the New Testament um, 
most often use Agapao. Um, I'm going to go out of, of that analytic and let's go down to just the table. Um, table is kind of cool because it's going to break it down and it's going to say, uh, it's going to give us our total hits here. Um, again, um, I want this sorted not by book. Right now it's sorting it by, um, by, by how the books are found in the, in the text, but I want to sort it by a uh, total hits. So again, command T or control T or come to the little cog wheel and go down to customize display either way. Um, and, uh, um, and uh, actually, you know what, for this one, I'm just gonna cancel it. For this one, I couldn't just come here and just say total hits, and it'll, it'll sort it that way. I didn't even need to bring, I didn't know, I didn't need to go any deeper than that. But um, uh, so I can see how many hits each one of these have. But, um, but notice that if I go back to reference, when I go to total hits, it eliminates the books that don't have any hits, but I'm kind of interested in some of the books that don't have hits. Like uh, here's Axe, doesn't have Agapao, doesn't have any form um, of agapao at all. Now remember, agapao is is a, a verb, the verbal form of agape, right? So agape might be there, some form of agape, um, but we just searched for agapao. So even though Acts doesn't have any, First Timothy doesn't have any, um, Titus and Philemon don't have any, that doesn't mean um, agape is not there or some form. So how do I find um, the different forms of, of uh, that are derived from agape? Notice, by the way, in Agapao, there's 143 hits. Well, to find, let's do a, a root search. So we're going to search for the root, which is um, uh, Agape. But I didn't even need. I don't. Even, I don't even need to know that. I don't. I don't need to know what the root is. I can just right click on it, say search for, and I can either search for the lexical form or this specific inflected form, or I can search for a root. And if I select root right there, now instead of 140 something, I have 320. Um, and these are all the different words that are um, that are derived from uh, from that. And um, I didn't notice if that table updated or not. Let me um, let me click on it. <clears throat> yeah, it didn't. So now we see that Axe has one, um, but uh, so still not used very frequently in Axe. And that doesn't mean there's no word for love found in Axe. It's just that any word derived, you know, there are a few derived from. Agape. All right. So searching by root is uh, is is you know handy and it's pretty easy because again you don't even have to know what the root is. You can just right click, say search for, <clears throat> and click on on root and it'll it'll do it. And by the way, you can also search by tag, and in that case you don't need to know at all what word you're looking for. So if I no, well notice this if I um, if I if I hover over agapeses, it's going to say down here that it's a verb in the second singular future active indicative, okay? So if I search by um, tag, I'm not searching for a root I'm, or, or a lexical form or an inflected form, I'm, or I'm, I'm not looking for any word in itself, I'm looking for that tag, I'm looking for any verb in the second singular future active indicative. And when I click on it, it'll find uh, all that. Um, and, uh, uh, and then I can click on the analysis and uh, let's get rid of that table here. And um, I can uh, sort this by frequency too, and uh, and see how many um, how many how many words in that you know second person singular future active indicative are are found there. All right, and Nagapa is used most uh, most commonly um, in, in that way. All right, now I want to uh, uh, let's do this because I don't have a whole lot of time. Um, I want to talk about using a construct search because, um, you know, it's easy enough to perform a search um, right here in the text. So let's say I've searched for agapao. Let's say I want to find every time agapao was found in the imperative. Okay. How do I do that? All right. Well, if I go to search up on the menu bar, go down to enter tag, go down to verb because this is a verb. It's going to ask me, well, what kind of verb is it? And uh, we're looking for the imperative mood, right? So under mood, we're going to go to imperative and click OK. I could have noticed, see that at sign? It's connecting these two ideas together. I'm not looking for two different words. I'm looking for one word, but it's got to be agapao, and it's also got to be agapao when it's an imperative. And when I click enter now, it's going to find just those kinds of forms. All right. So uh, doing those kinds of searches are, are pretty simple. Um, you know, right, you know, right from, from here, 
But uh, there are times where um, it gets too um, difficult to uh, to do. So uh, let me um, let me show you. Uh, let's see. Let me do this. Let's go. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a search that's more complex. And this is what I would normally do if I was looking at a at a text like um, uh, I wrote down. There, this this particular construction happens all over the the in Greek all the time. But let's. Uh, Let's just look at it here and here let me add the ESV just so you can see what's going on here. So um, so outer darkness, all right, this, this phrase, outer darkness. And notice what happens here. You've got an article followed by a noun. And again, I'm just looking at the instant details palette down here. Article, noun, article, adjective, okay? And what's important about the article, noun, article, adjective? Notice that this is a neuter single, singular accusative. That's neuter. They're all the they're all found in the same gender number and case. So this is when um, and, and this is when I you know this is how you usually wind up looking <clears throat> for these kinds of constructions. You see it in the text and it's interesting to you and you want to see if there are other times where this particular construction is used, where you've got this article noun, article adjective that agree in gender number and case. Now you'll agree that would be pretty difficult to try to type in all that in here. I don't, I don't even know how to do it. <laughs> it would take me a while, all right? But if you use, um, we have something called a graphical construct search that makes that really kind of easy to do. So how do you create a graphical construct search? The first step is to put your cursor here in the search entry box, all right? First step, and you gotta put it there because it's going to put the link command in there. And the link command is, uh, um, it is important. It won't work without the link command. So make sure your cursor is not here or over here in the library. It's got to be here. And if you go to File and you go down to New Tab, File New Tab, and you go down to Construct and you go to Greek or just Command Two or Control Two on a PC. That, that that's usually what I just do. And if you do it right, it'll say Link Greek Construct here in the search entry box, and you'll have the Greek Construct tab window. It says Greek Construct. That's the name over here too. All right, what is this thing? Well, what happens here in this graphical search, each one of these columns represents a word. And I can drag these column items into the column. I can drag multiple items if I want to, to define multiple criteria about each of the words that I'm looking for. All right, so now remember what we were looking for here, right? We were looking for this idea of an article, noun, article, adjective that agree in gender, number, and case. All right. These are column items right here. So they go in the column and you'll see uh, article is one of them. So if I drag article here and let go, it's gonna ask me what kind. I don't, I don't need, I'm not gonna specify it. So article, and it was article followed by a noun. I'm gonna drag that to the second column, representing the second word and click okay. Third is an, another article, okay. And, uh, and then it was um, an adjective, right? So article, noun, article, adjective. Again, I don't know what words I'm looking for. I'm just looking for any words in this particular construction. But remember, they have to agree in gender, number, and case. Now, these three connecting items, it says connecting items, they go in this area up here. They connect columns together in different ways. So if I drag this agree item here, it's going to ask me, how do you want this to agree? Well, I want to it to agree in gender, number, and case. All right. I'm not gonna specify what kind of gender number of case, I'm just saying it has to agree. All right, now, notice these little legs here. What those are saying is this article and this noun have to agree in gender number and case. But I want all of them to agree in gender number and case. Now, you can drag these legs and that's kind of cool. I like the action of that. But this is not what I wanna do because this is not like an umbrella that's saying everything under this agrees with gender number and in gender number and case. What it's saying is this article where this leg hits and this adjective have to agree in gender number and case. It doesn't say anything about what these two uh, are, but they all need to agree in gender number and case. I'm gonna drag this back. And what you do is you wanna say, I want this to agree with this, and I want this to agree with this, and I want this to agree with this, which means they would all agree. And the way to do that is to hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, and as you're holding it down, just drag. Drag it twice, all right? And that way it just copies, Option or Alt. And uh, now it's saying Article Agrees with Noun, 
Okay, now here's the deal. I really don't want to allow for any intervening words. And just because each one of these columns has something in it doesn't mean that in the text, other stuff can't come in between these columns. So I need to constrain it so that, uh, uh, so that not, I don't allow any other words. So I'm gonna grab this within command here. I'm gonna say something like four words. And now I, if, if my legs are hidden and I can't move that, I can drag this bar down so I can see those things. For the within command, I can say, I can, I, don't, I can sort of have it be an umbrella because what I'm saying is between this first word and between this last word, you can only allow four intervening words. And now uh, when I click search, it's going to find um, that particular construction. I could, const I could bring it down to three words to allow no intervening words, but then I'd miss some hits that would actually be valid hits. Um, but you get the idea. I just want you to see the idea of what a graphical construct search would do. Because again, doing this by just typing it in here would be very difficult. Um, and uh, what I usually do when I create something like this is I'll save it as a workspace so I can come back to it later. And the way you do that is just click on the workspaces button, go down to add workspace, um, give it a, a name, whatever you want to call it, you know, graphical construct search, whatever. Um, and uh, and then it's going to appear in your workspaces list and you can always um, open it up there. Now, I think I have a little bit more time. I want to talk about using the count command because the count command is kind of cool. Um, if you're, you know, still, you know, if you're in, in intermediate Greek, you're still working on your vocabulary, probably always be working on your vocabulary. And the count command is a great way to, um, to work on your vocabulary. So I remember, uh, a friend that was who was a um, uh, a Wycliffe Bible translator and uh, a younger a kind of a younger guy and um, he um, he was needing some help and a couple older uh, older guys you know came to the tribe where he was working older translators I think they were retired um, and and all they brought with them were their Greek New Testaments it's like that's all they needed <laughs> it's pretty amazing right so. I mean, we have some amazing tools, but sometimes uh, with, with these amazing tools, um, we we, uh, we we lose, we, we gain a lot, we gain a lot, but sometimes we might lose a little bit too. And I love that story where all they had were their Greek New Testaments. That's all they needed. Um, but anyway, um, let's talk about the count command as we start learning vocabulary. The count command is kind of cool because it uh, it looks for word um, uh, uh, like word frequency. Um, and you can tell it how many words you're looking for. So, um, and how do we implement the, the count command? If I just go to search, it's with all my commands. So search, enter command, and go down to uh, count. Um, or I can just right click in here and go down to enter command, um, you know, count. Or the easiest way is to just type in the letter C and any, any command that starts with the letter C just pops up there at the top. Well, the easiest way is to remember that it's shift command U or shift control U, but that's that's it's because C is used for content, so that might not be easy to remember. But anyway, uh, so I select count. All right, question mark that's highlighted means how it wants you to enter a number or a series of numbers. I mean, a range of numbers. So I'm going to type in number one, and uh, oh, let's go back to the to the Greek text here since we're working with Greek. Um, hit enter. And what we're doing now is we're finding all the hotbox in the uh, in the New Testament. And again, I can go to my analysis window, and um, I can uh, I don't have to sort them by frequency because they're all one, right? So these are all the words that are found, um, you know, just one time in uh, in the Greek New Testament. So kind of cool, um, very good. But uh, but that's not really going to help us for our uh, learning our vocabulary because the last thing we want to learn are all the words that are only found one time in the Greek New Testament, right? You don't start start with that. That would be pretty discouraging. Um, so what we want to do is say, you know what, let's find all the words that are found one through 50 times, okay? Why not? Um, now, these still aren't very, the most frequently used words, um, but what's cool about doing this, um, by the way, what we would really want to do, um, I'll, come back, I'll come back to the one to 50. What, if you were really working on your vocabulary, you could say, I don't know, find everything that's you found 200 to you know, 100,000 or something um, times. And, uh, and then of course you would go to your analysis and, 
Um, and then you, yeah, if it wasn't uh, sorted by frequency, you'd probably want to sort it by frequency. And so there you go. There's the beginning of a, a list to learn um, some of your, your vocabulary. Um, but, uh, um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, that's a great way to do it. Now, going back to the count one through 50 option, this is a way to find words that aren't used very frequently. And let's say what I wanted to do is I want to find I want to find all the words that are found one to 50 times in the whole New Testament. But then I want to look at the specifically the book of Ephesians and just find when those words are used in Ephesians. Now, now think about this. What I'm not looking for are all the words that are found one to 50 times in Ephesians, right? That's, uh, that's, you know, uh, they're going to, they're going to be a lot of words that, uh, um, that are still, you know, too unique there. What I'm looking for are all the words that are found one through 50 times in the whole New Testament, then highlight them in Ephesians. And so to do that, um, I'm going to need to use the hits command. And the hits command, to use the hits command, I'm going to create a new tab. The easiest way to create a new tab is to just use Command T or Control T on your keyboard. Command T on a Mac, Control, Mac, Control T in Windows. No, I'm sorry. I scrub that. Command N for new. <laughs> I don't know where I got the T. Command N or Control N for new. Sorry. Um, you can also go to File, New Tab, and then pick it all up. It, it, it's it, Command or Control N for new. Um, but uh, and then I uh, I do want to switch that to the Greek New Testament. And I'm going to put them side by side just so you can see what's going on. All right. So I found all the words that are found one through fifty times throughout the whole New Testament. Uh, now to use the hits command, I can just type in the letter H. There's a hits command at the very top. Um, if I have multiple tabs open, I'll get a window asking, well, what tab do you want to connect it to? I only had the one, so it didn't ask me. It just inserted the name of that tab in A28 Greek New Testament, and that's what's here. So um, now if I just hit enter, now it's going to show me pretty much the, you know, the same thing because I haven't selected a range over here yet. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, find that just in the range of Ephesians. So if I type in the letter, well, I use a range command, command shift R, um, or, 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 you know, I can go to search, enter command, um, range, uh, and then just enter Ephesians. All right. And so, again, what I've done now is I've found all the words in this first tab that are only, that are found one to 50 times. And now I'm seeing those just in, um, just in Ephesians. So what's, what this is saying is, as I'm reading through Ephesians, the words highlighted in red are probably going to be the ones I'm not as familiar with, okay, and that I might want to look up a little bit more. Um, and so the ones that aren't in, in red are found more than 50 times in the, in the New Testament. So I'm probably, you know, I probably know them. And you can adjust this on the fly. So, you know, you can say, um, I know a lot of those words. Let's do one to 25 times. And then it's going to highlight um, even more words or even, even uh, fewer words there. So you get the idea. All right. Well, it is. Uh, it's been an hour and a half, so I guess at this time I'll just open it up. If anybody has any any questions, and I imagine there probably are. Let's see, I'll see if I can turn my camera back on there. If it doesn't make my screen too small. So Rick or Richard or Linda. Yeah, well, that's good. Question. Good, Mark. Well, thank you. Yeah, Lynn, did you, you have a question? Uh, when I try to use my search command, the only option that I have is define range. I'm not sure why that would be there. Um, he says. And what, yeah, that'd be if you could um, just elaborate on uh, which uh, search command. Um, now, if you, if you did command shift, uh, well, Command Shift R should bring up the range command. You can also come over to the little circle with the plus sign in it on the right hand side of the search entry box and go to ranges and it's set to all text. Um, you can go to your predefined ranges. If you have one um, for Ephesians, uh, you could go there too. And if you don't, you would go down to the define range, um, uh, define range box. And Command R, I think, is the normal 
uh, command for bringing up the define range dialog box, but I, I remapped it in accordance. You can uh, you can now in your keyboard preferences, you can map remap uh, keyboard shortcuts. I never used define range with command R, but I use the research tab all the time. So I did command or control R for the research tab instead of the range command to bring it up. Yeah, she's saying that's the only command she gets is define range when she's using it. Um, so I I don't know why that would be the only command she's getting. Um, yeah, is it possible that on the free version, um, it's uh, there are limited commands? I'm not sure. I think yeah. all, it's right, yeah. So it may uh, be, yeah, I, I, that's the only thing I can think of. I can't think of why there, that would be the only command unless the free version, the trial, I, I don't even know what they call it, whatever the free version is well, of Accordance um, mm -hmm. is limited in some ways. And it's possible if you have that, that that's one of the ways it's limited. Yeah, and uh, if you'll email me a screenshot, I'll take a look at that. Um, okay. Is there a way to get Accordance to show all the parsing options for a word and not just one parsing option? Um, well, uh, if you're, uh, looking for, I mean, it depends. I, I don't know if I'm exactly understanding your question, but if you search for a particular, uh, lexical form and it's going to show you all the inflected forms. And if you go to your analysis, um, and again, command T or control T here, and you can say, all right, show me all the different inflected forms. Um, and then show me, <clears throat> um, you know, go use ta the tag option there. And it'll show you all the different the tags for the different words, the ones that are found. Now, you might be asking for forms that aren't even found in the uh, Greek New Testament. Um, no, but but you can also go to. I mean, you could do the same thing in the Septuagint and find find more. But yeah, it's only if I'm understanding you correctly, it's only going to show you the forms that are that are found uh in the text you'd have to go to a grammar or something like that that would list that would list them okay and there was a question earlier how did you get the parsing to be color coded um yeah it should uh let's see um if you go to let me just pick a let me just pick a particular doesn't, anything doesn't matter um, and go to amplify and language and go to parsing. Um, the parsing doesn't get color coded there, but if you go to um, when, let's see, I know the diagram um, does it. Uh, that might be the only thing I can think of that actually has the color coding other than the syntactical database um, uh, color codes. Uh, well, it's not even, it doesn't even really do it. All the diagrams do. So. Yeah, he said that um, example was it showed colors for different parts of speech. Yeah, I think that was probably, um, uh, let me go back there again. That was the diagram. If you go to language and then go to diagram, um, it's going to uh, color code all the different words and then show you the legend there that indicates the different parts of speech. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else here. How did you change between the English and Greek keyboard? Um, if you're in a Greek text, it's automatically going to adjust to the to a, a, basically a Greek keyboard. It's not going, you know, it's it's going to map as it's going to map the Greek letters to the to the English letters. Um, so uh, so I'm I'm you know if I type in you know as we you know agapao a g a p a w. Um, I just type those English keys and it maps it to those particular keys uh, there. And if I went to a Hebrew text and, you know, had words or whatever selected and, and went to bara or something like that, B-R-A is going to map there. Um, now, if you want to, and this might not be your question, but other people may have this question. Um, if you go to your preferences um, and go down to uh, uh, Greek and Hebrew, uh, and your preferences, you can choose to use the Greek polytonic keyboard layout if you're more familiar with that. And we also have the Israeli keyboard layout if you're using Hebrew. 
Um, so some people may be more familiar with those and you won't, you won't have to go through the process of relearning uh, all the keyboard mappings. But remember, um, you can go, you can find our current keyboard mappings by going to help and typing in keyboard shortcuts and it's the second item down. Okay, if you do the word count, that word count search, how can I put that into a document with glosses? Um, you can, a uh, couple different ways. Um, so let's do that again. Let's do a uh, count command and I'm gonna say find everything that's um, 200 to 500 or something like that. And then we went to an analysis. All right, and then make sure it's, you know, you can sort it however you want to sort it. And it's going to have the glosses there. Now, um, uh, and, and you can just copy and paste. This is, you know, you just highlight, select all, copy, go to Word or whatever and paste. That's, that's one way. Um, but obviously then you'd have to, um, it, it doesn't by default um, present it like in a tab delimited format, but um, if you go to help up on the menu bar, and I'm glad you asked this question because I want to talk about this. If you go to help and you go down to um, the accordance exchange, accordance exchange, and let me make this uh, fill the screen and go to automation. So the accordance exchange is a place for users to uh, to provide their own user generated content and it's all vetted so it's safe. But there are some options here. Uh, so for example, here's Libre based, based flashcards and what it does is it's um, it'll it'll bring out that data in a in a tab delimited format and and here's one that for creating flashcards is Mac only. Um, but uh, but this uh, and there there's another one here. Where, I think this um, uh, um, I think this one here, this more will uh, will also work. Um, so anyway, on the, under the automation section, there are some ways to get it out of that analysis window into a tab delimited format, um, and then into a flashcard system. Um, so you may want to check check those out. Okay, um, um, Linda. Before you go on to the next question. I just want to let people know that uh, our website, it's not down, but it's running extremely slow right now. So I know somebody had put something in the cart and they were having problems with it. I just checked. It took uh, quite a while for the store to come open and we are checking on that now. Uh, the store will open. Uh, when you click on it, just give it a little bit time because it is slow or if you have to refresh. But uh, we are checking on that right now. And then, Linda, do you want to just say something about the code? And then we'll get back to some questions. OK, I put the code in the chat box. It's Academy 25. Um, and earlier today, we did give out the code E Academy 25. Either one should work, um, but it should really have been Academy 25. So I would go with that one. And that's good for 25% off uh, an entire order and it can't be used on the special sales items that um, are on this week but everything else and it's good for the entire order okay can you do greek searches that include both the new testament and the lx6 um yes and um there's a couple of ways to do that we actually have a um uh, we have a module that is um, a combination of both of those, the LXX GNT. Um, and if you have either one of those, it's not, it's pretty cheap to get it. Um, but that's, you know, that's the obvious way, right? Um, so if I type in something there, I can search through the whole thing. Um, <clears throat> but um, uh there's several ways to do this um one way to do it too might be to um to use the link command so if i open up ralph's or something here and um i didn't talk about the link command or well actually the link command was used when we used the graphical construct search but it entered, entered it automatically but if you go to search here and you go down to enter command and you go to link all right, and so it's linking that to the NA28. And so now when I do Agapao, um, it's gonna search for both of them simultaneously. So you can do that with any any text that have the same language. Um, so if I wanted to do that with 
um, Philo or something like that, I could I could do that too. Again, just enter the link command, type in the letter L. There you go. That's another way to do it. It's going to ask you, what do you want to link to? Well, I want to link them all to the NA28. And let me drag that down there so you can see it too and perform the same search. So there you go. So, um, so yeah, so that's a neat way to, to be able to do it. Again, as long as it's all the same language, it'll work great. Okay, I have the Greek New Testament tagged, which came with my Greek package I've had for years. What advantage would I have to upgrading to the NA28 Sigla other than to be able to use the apparatus? None. So, so I wouldn't even worry with it if you don't need the apparatus. And, and like I was saying, you know, if you had the NA28 without the apparatus and you get the CNTTS apparatus, then you could still use it with an apparatus, just not the NA28 one with the Sigla. So yeah, if, you know, there are a lot of people that probably don't care that much about the Sigla, but then there are a lot of people that do. So it just depends on what kind of, what kind of studies you, you tend to do. Um, but okay. yeah. Um, the, when I you did like it, it because I showed it to you that you have that you, know, that you need it. <laughs> so, good question. Okay, when you did that NTLXX search, what kind of analytics do you get? Um, uh, oh, yeah, you're going to get a separate analytics window for each window uh, for each uh, text, unless you um, uh, unless you um, use that one the one module that has everything. So let me go back. So anyway, so if I go to analytics here, let me just, let's go back. If I go to analysis here, it's just going to show it to me for the Greek New Testament and I'd have to see one for Rouse and one for Philo and so forth. Um, but uh, if I, uh, I need to uncheck lexicon look up, be careful me. I keep clicking on words and I, uh, and it, it keeps popping up that. So, um, but if I, let me come back to, um, uh, when I just open, if I use this one, let's see what it looks like Looks like when uh, we type in agapao, go to analytics here, and, um, and it's gonna show us, yeah, 4 to 19. So it's showing us across the range, or, um, you know, I can go to a different type of analytics, like the table. It's gonna show me Genesis um, through Revelation, uh, the table, so yeah. So if you're doing a lot of that kind of stuff, this is a, a, good, a, good, mod, a good text to have. Uh, it's handy for that kind of stuff, especially if you're using a lot of analytics with it. Yes. Um, in fact, instead of using the table, um, if you go down to notice there's one that's table and there's another one that says table chart. If you take table chart is a bar graph. Um, so yeah, it'll show you there. And then 